So my name is Oscar Martinez. I lead the Big Data Cloud and Advanced Analytics team in ClearPix, a data consultancy firm specialized in, in the traditional BI and for the last few years also on big data, machine learning, AI, and uh, also specialized a lot on, on cloud technologies. Um, today I'm here to talk about a story of a, a big blue elephant and a big green elephant. I don't know if you guys have ever seen two elephants mating, but it sure is a you know interesting event. And and so this is the story of these two elephants that basically are now creating a orange um, elephant. So I divided the talk in in these three areas. First, I will start with an introduction, what I call the beginning of the pacification for for Cloudera, and and then. I'll jump into some lessons learned of a bunch of projects that we've done with the old Cloudera. I'm quoting for the ones that you know you cannot see because you are far. Then I'll talk about the future, even though technically speaking, it's kind of the present because they have already released the, the new platform, the, the CDP, the Cloudera Data Platform, but it's, it's really gonna start hitting everyone half of next year in, in reality. And then some uh, bullet points, the, the key takeaways that I want you guys to take when, when you leave this, uh, this room. Okay, let's start. So Cloudera, um, this is a bit of a journey of Cloudera, very high level. Uh, in 2004, for the uh, big data geeks like me, you may know that um, Doug Cutting and Mike Caffarella, uh, based on a couple of papers released in Google, they basically created Hadoop, which was quickly became a quick success, and a lot of the you know web companies, uh, Facebook, Yahoo, and so on, started to right away using it. Uh, it was the whole open source thing, and um, in the end, the Hadoop, the base Hadoop, was a bunch of different services or software that you had to install in all the nodes of a cluster, and uh, we are maybe talking about hundreds of thousands of nodes. It's on not only one software, a, a bunch of them. So managing this whole thing was quite tedious. The, the early guys could do it because they basically created the product. Uh, for example, uh, Cutting was basically for a few years on, on Yahoo. So I mean, he created it, so probably he was the best guy to you know, make these deployments. But a few years later, in 2008, some guys from Oracle, Yahoo, Facebook, um, they said, OK, what if we, you know, try to make this Hadoop thingy a more uh, enterprise-ready product. And that was the beginning of Cloudera. Um, first, they released the Cloudera distribution, including Hadoop. That was the first name that later on was rebranded to the Cloudera distribution of Hadoop. And uh, that was 2008. Then I put a, uh, some, you know, three points or four points actually there. That's, you know, when um, first Yarn, then Impala, Spark, and all these other lit, uh, projects appear, so I could focus in that area, but I, I, I prefer to focus in something that happened a bit later, around 2017, because I, I think that's really the foundation of, of um, the three points that really now drive Cloudera from being initially basically a Hadoop big data company. You know, a bit, Cloudera was a big data tech, okay? And now they are cha changing their methods and actually their whole strategy to become uh, the enterprise data cloud. Uh, basically, a you know, platform for digital transformation. So it's you know they are opening the scope of what they attempt to do. In 2017, three things uh, were incorporated into the Cloudera stack. The first one is the Cloudera Data Science Workbench. Basically, um, until that moment, Cloudera or, or you know Hadoop were stuff that you would install off on virtual machines or on on-premise. Okay, Data Science Workbench was the first. Cloudera thing that was running on Kubernetes. It still runs on Kubernetes, which was a shift already from stuff running on virtual machines directly installed or stuff running on, on um, basically Kubernetes on containers. The second thing uh, that I want to highlight is Cloudera Altus. Uh, until that moment, Cloudera, still today, uh, it's very, you know, you you basically put Cloudera on-premise, no? It's, it's thought for on-premise, but at that point, Cloudera saw that, uh, you know, they are called Cloudera, but they were not really on cloud, 
So they, they started to have their first cloud offering. This, this is the first Cloudera Pass offering. So they started to have Spark as a service on cloud, uh, Impala as a service on cloud. And together with that, it was also released the, the shared data experience, which is basically a common sh data context that basically allows you to separate compute and storage. So you have the storage, you create a metadata layer that manages all the data, governments, the security access, and then on top of it, you can create the different uh, compute engines, okay? That's a formula that is already being used by other um, companies. Some of them are in, in outside and very successfully they are using it. We include because also use these these technologies. Okay, so those are the three points that for me really uh, made the foundation of the direction of today's Cloudera. Also, of course, there is the mating thingy that I mentioned. One year later, last year, the announcement of the merger with Hortonworks. Um, which, you know, it's, uh, as I said, there were two basically competitors, rivals fighting, you know, challenging each other constantly, and then you know, they became, they are becoming the, f the same company. Uh, Hortonworks, in my opinion, uh, was better in terms of security, the way they manage security, and they were also better in their uh, streaming and real-time services that they, they shipped. While Cloudera on the other side, they were better, in my opinion, again, on, on how you manage a cluster and also on the BI services. So by combining these two, you can mm, choose the best of, that. Actually, that, that's actually what they did, and have a very, very strong uh, uh, offering. So after the Horton was merged, the very first thing that Cloudera incorporated was the Horton Wars Data Flow, rebranded it into Cloudera Data Flow, which is basically the, the NIFI in a cluster integrated with the whole stack. Okay. And now, um, a few weeks ago, the official release of the Cloudera Data Platform, the new platform of Cloudera that I will cover later on, okay, is a is an umbrella term. To, to basically talk about a few other sub-products, okay? But I'll, I'll talk about that later on. Cloudera is everywhere, and now even more with the Horton Wars merger. They are in the top companies on, on banking, and telcos, and governments, and automotive, pharma, technology, you name it, okay? You are, they, they are basically everywhere, but on the old traditional, and they want to jump to the new, you know, the, the situation to keep the same for the new Cloudera platform. Why is Cloudera popular and used? Um, I think the main reason is the multi-function, okay? It's a single platform. But basically, in, inside the platform, there are multiple services, but you govern everything from a single point that can act as multiple things. It can be a data lake. It can be a data engineering platform. It can, it can host different types of data analytical stores. So traditional, well, not actually not traditional, but data warehousing type of stores. Search engine, you can host a search engine, basically solar. You can store real-time stores in Cloudera with either Kudu or HBase, depending on the use case. You can have operational data databases, also with HBase. You can have data flow streaming applications and pipelines with Kafka, with Nifi, with Storm, Spark streaming. And then with the whole uh, data science workbench, you can have data science applications and also with a Spark. So it's basically cover, I think, the all of it, the only thing I actually miss here would be the data visualization. And you may know, you may have heard that Cloudera a month ago or two months ago, they acquired Arcadia Data. So I think in a, in a month from now, we will also see there the BI platform or the you know visualization services. But may, maybe it's the only thing I would miss now as to have a really complete and they just acquire Arcadia Data. So they're, they're hitting that way. Okay, as I said, Cloudera, the traditional Cloudera was something that you would install on on-premise clusters, okay? And basically, I've been in that spot, um, actually in a talk that we will be having tomorrow related to a success story in Andorra, in, in Andorra government, okay? And basically, it's, you arrive there, they want a big data platform, and, and the choice was, if it's on-prem, I mean, then forget about uh, AWS, Azure, Databricks, okay? Because that's on on-prem, it was either Cloudera or Horton, was, no? You had to choose one or the other. Cloudera uh, basically is a bunch, you probably have seen this um, blue graph, uh, blue, blue pick many times. It had all the services to fulfill these workloads, so a bunch of SQL services, streaming services, security, and so on, okay? And the same with Hortonworks. Hortonworks also has different services. Some of them are common, some of them are slightly different versions, but uh, pretty much to cover the most of the workload, okay? Later on, uh, HDP didn't 
include the NIFI, so they release it as a separate pro product, which was the HDF, the Horton Adapt Data Flow, basically NIFI plus some things to ease how we treat with the NIFI and with uh, Kafka, actually, uh, another component that is included in the HDF. Okay, so as I said, and to wrap up this section, the Cloud Data Science Workbench with the introduction of Kubernetes in the Hadoop, Hadoop world, Caldera Altus, which was the first step of Caldera into the past, into really going to a detachment of storage and compute into, into cloud, which was enabled by the SDX. Those three things, those three pillars, are the ones that Caldera has now built on top, the Caldera Data Platform that I will basically review after <laughs> this second section, where I'll, when I'll basically be talking about some lessons learned when doing data analytics platforms with uh, Cloudera. So in one way or another, you probably have seen different um, approaches to this graph. This basically indicates the whole end-to-end -end journey from, for a data analytics pipeline. From the source system, you ingest these sources, either with batch processing tools or with streaming processing tools, into a, data, a raw data, okay? That raw data can be a data lake, if you were using traditional BI, it was basically the staging area on a database, or you would also use a streaming platform like Kafka to ingest your events in real time and host these events, okay? Then either you use Data Lake, a staging area, or a streaming platform in real time or in batch, you will need a bunch of services that will transform this data into a format that you can actually, or a structure or a store that you can actually use for analytic purposes, okay? That be it a data warehouse or a search engine, or a real-time store for really quick analytics, or a operational store to store um, uh, information that will be used for a, a web base or any operational activity. And then in the end, for the typical analytic operations, you'll be doing some dashboarding, reporting, or data science projects, okay? And ideally, uh, you would love to have a layer on top that governs and secures the whole thing with as many steps as possible. Okay, um, so, just some thing that may look obvious, but in the, in the traditional BI, in the traditional data warehouse, we had the staging area with, uh, with the tables kind of raw, and then you, we had the final area, the SDE or the SDAD, and you would have the final tables with the fact and dimensions, okay? When you put this into the uh, data warehouse version big data, you pretty much have the same. You have in the raw data, the data leg, you have data, all of, all of it, data from source uh, that are structured and structured and semi-structured, and, but this data, I've seen, I've, we've been in projects that is like, okay, I have my data lake full of data, how do I use it? Because, you know, it's text files, unformatted, I mean, how the hell do I use my data lake? There are tools to use it on top, but in, in the end, in the end, you'll always need to curate that data, okay? Because the data and data lake, you know, the concept of data lake is great, but to use it, you most probably gonna end up creating curated data sets, which probably will be stored in, maybe in the same data lake, but, are, but then you can call that uh, data warehouse if you know, it's properly formatted and structured and partitioned and so on. But you may also store it in a search engine or a specialized data warehousing uh, solution like Snowflake, okay? You can also store it in a search engine for, to enable Google-like queries in a real-time store, an operational store. And then for, uh, specific uh, functional areas or for a specific applications, maybe for a machine learning pipeline, you're going to end up also creating enriched data sets or, you know, joint data sets, aggregated data sets to basically feed this application, okay? So probably, I mean, no, these are, those are the three layers. You have the raw data with the data lake, the curated data sets, and finally some enriched data sets. And normally there are these three logical layers that when I talk to customers about, you know, having this kind of data analytics platform with big data, it usually boils down to these three different layers, okay? So probably one more layer than we used to be. So I also wanted to spend a couple of minutes in um, lessons learned on sizing uh, this multi-function or multi-workload cloud data clusters. Traditionally, when, when I, w I would enter in with a customer and I would say, okay, um, you, you know, you are in this situation, you need a cloud data cluster, and he would, okay, l let's size it. You know, in the beginning, you're like, tell me the data you have. Okay, one, one petabyte. Okay, so basically to store it in Hadoop, you know, Hadoop replicates everything three times. So you basically multiply the amount of data by three, and that's the size of the HDFS cluster. Okay, that was okay for a first iteration. 
But nowadays, it's slightly more complicated because now HDFS fault tolerance is not only done with a replication, it can also do erasure coding. There are not only HDFS, there are other types of stores like Kudu uh, or Solar, and now it will uh, start to be in these options also Ozone, Apache Ozone will enter preview in the next Cloudera data platform. So you will have um, three, four, five different type of stores to store our data. So it's not only HDFS anymore. Actually, I, I, you know, mm, I heard from Cloudera technical guys that the future looks more for Ozone than it looks more for HDFS. So it looks Ozone will be a thing in the, in the future. Um, even if you, we were to be stuck with HDFS, it's not only CSV, you have also Parquet or C, sequence files, and a lot of formats, and depending on the use case, one fits more the other. Okay, so it's, it's not as simple as multiplied by three. So basically, we have um, a process that we have applied already a few times, for example, <laughs> like we will say tomorrow. Uh, basically, an Excel file in which we list the data sources, and then for every data source, tell me how much data do you have? Right now, historical data, how much data do you generate per day, per year? This data, what are the fields that you will most probably query? Usually time, you know, client, or, or so on. Okay, this data set, what is the retention period? You want to keep the data and have access data for 10 years, for five, okay? And then, uh, you remember what I mentioned before, no? You have these three logical layers, the raw, the curated, and then rich. Which ones do you want to store? There are some clients, no, I want to store the raw, all the raw. Okay, that's, you know, that, that may be quite heavy. They are, most of the customers, they are happy with storing just the curated. But, you know, you can find both things. Then, for every of these store data sets that they want to store, then you'll have to find which is the best store for it, which is the best format. If it's on the data warehousing side, how you partition and how you cluster the data, usually you will do that by the variables that you are querying. Or if it's HBase, which model you want to, you know, how do you build a key in HBase? Or what are the solar indexes? And, you know, next, uh, the ozone, how you split the ozone, and, and wherever store, how, how do you leverage? So basically, we have this Excel. Uh, it may seem rudimentary, but it actually works. With this Excel, we, we fill it in. We did say the type of, you know, the source, the type of retention, all these things, and that basically gets that. That is the total size that you will need per sort and per store data set of that source. And then basically you define a node specifications. Usually Cloudera says there are three types of nodes, the IO intensive, the data intensive, and the average ones, okay? And depending on the overall cluster usage, you're gonna most probably go for the average, but in some cases the data or the IO. So you'll, anyway, you'll say, okay, I have, you know, my node, because I have this agreement with this hardware vendor, it is a 80 terabyte uh, disk per node, you know, whatever, 256 gigs with uh, 16 or 64 cores, whatever. And then basically you made the division and okay, you'll need, you know, 15 nodes. Uh, that usually contents most of the customers. There have been some uh, customers that they also came to us with, uh, that's okay, but I want a number of uh, nodes that guarantee certain performance SLAs. So that query, I wanted to run it until 10 seconds. And that is really hard to estimate, okay? We did our best in this, in this Excel and in this application to make some assumptions on the uh, disk speed and on the how the data is partitioned and clustered to be able to give estimations of, of the performance that you will get eventually in a cluster in the future. But that is a very hard thing to do. So, um, some lessons learned for different workloads. In data warehousing, usually you will store the curated data sets in either Parquet if you were in, in Cloudera and you were using Impala, or you would be using ORC if you were in Horton Oaks and you were using the Hive uh, leave long and process or, or low latency and I think depending on the name, no? the Hive LLAP. And as I mentioned before, you would partition by the most common query columns, usually by date what I see most in practice. And the clustering, you would, for every, for example, parquet or C file, you would cluster or bucket, depending on the application, they call it one way or the other. But basically, it's within every parquet or C file, you block the data, maybe by customer, I, not the customer ID, but uh, well, maybe the customer ID, but some other attribute that you may also filter by. Okay, uh, in the search engine, something that we found out um, is that if you read documentation, they say, no, no, you know, if you want to put data on Solar, which is the 
the solar engine that you have in Cloudera and also in Hortonworks. You know, you need to do it with more flights and a map reduce for batch and flume for real time. In practice, we've been doing it with Nifi. Um, you will hear Nifi a lot, probably if you've been attending these kind of events. Nifi is a very hot thing uh, and, and also to feed data into search engines. Uh, the cool thing of solar, uh, is it better than Elasticsearch? Depending on the workload, in most many cases, maybe not, maybe yes. The cool thing of solar and having this inside Cloudera is, of course, the integration with the rest of analytical stores. Uh, solar actually stores data on HDFS, so you can imagine that that enables some integration better than having it in a separate store outside of the cluster. In real time, um, basically you're going to be using uh, these four things. NIFI is the ingestion to bring data outside to inside the platform. Uh, Kafka is the big bucket in, you, in which you will store the events. And then these events, maybe the same NIFI will get them and store it in a Kudu or in an HBase, okay? Uh, are, is this the only option that you have? No, but this, you know, using this stack within the cluster will also, similar to what I said with Solar, give you this better uh, integration. Okay, uh, now let's jump to the future, you know, of Cloudera, the Cloudera data platform. So, as I mentioned, Cloudera has started this trip from being a big data tech to being the enterprise data cloud, the digital transformation platform, okay? And those are the four pillars that they are building on top. Uh, it's an hybrid cloud, so that is uh, something that you can ha basically only have with Cloudera, uh, because you can have a Cloudera data platform that has some things on Azure, some things on uh, Amazon, some things on Google Cloud, and some things on-prem, and have a single pain to control all these different workloads. They also has replication managers or, or, or workload managers, so it detects when workload X is running slow in that environment, you can bloop, replicate it to other um, environments to you know have um, to solve a pain when you have a burst in usage or stuff like this. Multifunction that remains like it was, um, but it only got better. You know the type of workloads you can tackle are you know larger and larger. Secure and govern, being in a single platform, you can have a nice data context and everything govern, which is also quite unique. And a change um, for Cloudera is that now it becomes completely open. So before Cloudera, 96 or 97 percent of Cloudera was open source. There were three percent that they were, you know, not open. Now everything will become open. Okay, um, this is the cloud data platform. I'm gonna start on the top. Uh, it is an hybrid and multi-cloud platform. It has services to run on edge basically minify, okay? And it can run or you can deploy parts of the CDP in uh, multiple clouds, basically Azure, Google, and Amazon. Uh, right now, only Amazon. Um, you can have a private cloud, so you can have it on-prem, okay? So, and you can actually combine all these in an hybrid, in an hybrid cloud on-prem, the platform. Uh, the second part, the, the starting on the top, the Cloudera SDX. This layer that you put in every environment to have a govern access and a govern data uh, layer, okay? So you may, basically for every environment, you will define a kind of a data lake where the data is, and on top of the data lake, there is a, a metadata management for the security and governance of this, and then you build on top everything, all the compute, basically. Um, then I'm gonna go to the bottom of it, which is the one view, there is a single pane of glass to access all the different environments that may comprise of a, a CDP platform. L later I'll, I'm going to give an example, probably you'll understand then. In the end, what you have under the hood, it is a Cloudera runtime, that's the new name of the distribution, and it's basically the merge of CDH, the Cloudera software before, and HDP, okay? And it takes the best of both worlds, as, as we will see before. You can, inside CDP, clear, create data hub clusters, which are basically traditional clusters, more or less, that run on virtual machines or on-prem, okay? And then the new thing here is this, what they call the analytical services, that are services that run on top of Kubernetes, okay? 
And right now, I'm graying out the stuff that is not available, okay? Right now, you can create Kubernetes-like uh, services for data warehousing and for machine learning. Okay, uh, what is this Cloudera runtime? The new open source Hadoop distribution that Cloudera is releasing. It's basically uh, adopting superior technologies. So you would have before in an HDP cluster Ambari as the tool to basically uh, manage all the installation of the services in the cluster. And in Cloudera Manager, it was the counterpart, okay? In my opinion, Cloudera Manager was better. In Cloudera's opinion also, because now basically Cloudera Manager will become the only management tool per uh, data hub cluster, okay? Sentry and Ranger, as I said before, for me, um, Horton was did a better job by adopting Ranger. Also, Cloudera thinks the same because Ranger was, it will become the, the default security for aut authorization and authentication, not basically authorization, and, um, you know, in detriment of Sentry, which was the Cloudera, you, you know, the version, the tool that Cloudera was using before. And so on with Cloudera Director and Cloud Break, and with uh, Hive on Spark on Hive on Test. Hive on Test will become the new Hive flagship uh, ETL um, version of Hive. Then some technologies that they were overlapping, they basically merge, like Hue and Dustlight, or, or the BDR, the, the replication that was in uh, Cloudera with the DLM. So they are merging all these things. Navigator is combining into Atlas. It will be called Atlas, so it basically will be the Atlas 2.0 that you know will absorb Navigator. And then some technologies, you actually keep them. No, I, I, I was curious to know what would happen with Impala and Hive uh, LLAP, and they are actually keeping both. And um, there are, you know, they'll <laughs> we'll need to see which one you would use in, in which situation. Hive being more suitable for traditional BI queries, and Hive LAP, it's very good for caching uh, queries, okay? So it's, it's difficult to find which, which is which. Same with Parquet and OSC, actually they're keeping both. Kudu will be there, and also Hive 3.0, which brings ACID, which is a you know, uh, long-weighted thing for the community having ACID on top of uh, uh, Hive. Druid will also be there, okay? And the Cloudera Data Science Workbench there with Zeppelin. Niffy, of course, there. Phoenix is there. Knox, Libby, all these things are there. The new thing is the bar virtual private clusters, which were added in Cloudera 6.3, uh, sorry, 6.2. And this basically what allows even on-prem to separate storage of uh, compute, okay? You will have pr private cluster. The very basic cluster you need is the storage cluster uh, that is the basically in the cloud, the so-called data lake cluster and then you will create the compute engines. And entering preview in the first release of CDP will be your zone, an object store, S3-like, in Cloudera, even on-prem, okay? Which is uh, quite a breakthrough. Okay, and Atlas I already mentioned. Um, those are the places where you will be able to run Cloudera. The form factors, you know, the actual products that you can install, there are three. And actually you can combine them, okay? The first thing that is going to be released, actually already released, but uh, um, to access you need to talk to Cloudera, uh, is the CDP public cloud, as of now in Amazon, okay? That is basically the form factor for, for the cloud. You also have CDP data center, uh, released pr in principle 15 of November, but also to get access you need to talk to Cloudera, which basically the version of it to run on uh, bare metal. And an evolution of the data center will be the private cloud that will be released half of next year, okay? So I'm now gonna more or less explain each of them to give you a, an idea of what they do. This is the CDP version for public cloud. Uh, basically, you have a management console to govern everything. You will rely on S3 or the Azure Data Lake, okay, or, or the Google equivalent to basically host your HDFS, the data, okay? Then, to w in the moment you create this environment, you need to define where the data is stored, so S3, Amazon, in Amazon, uh, in Data Lake on Azure, or the Google Cloud. And then, automatically, a small cluster is created with at least two nodes that basically manages this storage and has all the uh, metadata stuff for the security. So it has Atlas, it has uh, Ranger, all these things will be in this small management cluster which is the data lake cluster. Um, 
once you have this base cluster, you basically are able to create data hub clusters, which there are some templates. So there is a data hub cluster for data engineering with Spark, you know, that you just click, 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 and it creates it. But you can also build a traditional that, you know, cluster where you can choose which and which not and how you distribute everything. So you can, there will be templates or pre-built uh, clusters, but you can do your own. And those are the traditional clusters that would run on virtual machines, you know, as we know them. Uh, today. The new things are basically these analytical services that are meant to be for ephemeral uh, workloads. So when you need uh, your HR department to analyze data only on the end of the month or the sales department, then you can create a Kubernetes-based data warehouse, basically an Impala cluster that will read the data, okay, and only for one day and then turn it off. And the same for machine learning and later on the uh, Cloudera will also release the rest of uh, um, the data flow, the data engineering, the rest of workloads as analytic services. On the data center version, basically we don't have the, these this Kubernetes-like services, but the other one is pretty much the same. Instead of using the uh, S3 or ec 2 instances, you basically will use the physical or virtual hardware on your on-prem deployment. On top of this hardware, you will create a base cluster, the equivalent to the data lake, which in the on-prem they call base uh, cluster, and this provides the data context, basically the HDFS, the Hive Metastore, Atlas, and Ranger, the basic. And then on top of it, as in the cloud, you can create the different data hub clusters for the different workloads, or have just one with everything, and so on. The Private cloud is the evolution of the data center to mimic what you can do on the cloud. Basically, you will require your uh, traditional on-prem hardware, so your big data servers, and you will require a Kubernetes deployment. Okay, And Cloudera will actually uh, release their own Kubernetes implementation, the Cloudera Kubernetes, that's still to be released. And you will add that uh, to be able to create these ephemeral workloads. Okay. The very cool thing of the CDP is that you can actually create uh, multiple data centers, multiple private clouds, multiple public clouds, and have everything governed under the same umbrella CDP. And then Cloudera offers as a SaaS this management console where you can control the different environments. And as part of this SaaS service, there are these three services, the workload manager, the replication manager, and the data, data, data catalog that will monitor how these guys are doing. And when it detects that, you know, short-term workload with the workload manager is, uh, you know, struggling in that environment, you can use the replication manager to move data and to move workloads pseudo-automatically to a different environment that you just created. And that will maybe mean a data hub or a, or a, or a female cluster, okay? And of course, the data catalog on top of everything helps you see all the different SDX, all the different data contexts in the different environments from a single view, okay? And this is pretty much the unique thing of, of Cloudera. Okay, so um, to wrap up the talk, there are a few bullet points that I want to uh, raise. Multi-workload or multi-function big data cloud pacification is now a thing, okay? Storage and computing detachment is the new black. Uh, at least for Cloudera, it was already for a few uh, others, and they are really building on that. And while that is the new black, the new white is Kubernetes and be able to leverage containerization even for traditional big data tech like, like Cloudera. And on top of that, minimize, centralize, simplify all the admin, all the security tasks with this single view, with the SDX, and so on, okay? It's able to run a multi-cloud, AWS, Azure, GCP, or even private cloud. So you are no longer attached to one cloud and do the whole deployment on Amazon or Azure. And then, you know, a company decides to go to uh, another provider. Then you need to reshape and re-engineer everything. I actually, you know, in my team, I have guys that have been one year in a project because of this type of decisions. Now we were in Azure. Now we go to Amazon. So now let's change a pure Amazon big data thing to, <laughs> to Azure, okay? Uh, so that, that things actually happen. Um, you can combine this, all of them actually together. So you can have something in one cloud or something in another cloud, something in, in, in the private or the you know, on-prem and combine everything on this hybrid uh, the environment. 
There is a new Hadoop distribution that is the evolution and the improvement of the two basically top distributions that we had out there. You can combine data lakes, base clusters, which are basically the equivalent on on-prem, with compute permanent like uh, clusters with ephemeral clusters that will be powered by Kubernetes, and all with fully open source software. Uh, thank you a lot for your attention. Uh, now we'll have five minutes left for questions. Uh, as I'm seeing not many questions in the previous talks. Uh, <laughs> if you want to ask them, welcome. If not, just, you know, I'll be around uh, here or outside if you want to chase me for a while. Thanks all.